wire wire bow charger for the other ones wire lamogu uh we're just gonna hit it running now um i came quite late man when and i this sunday i ate ate the evening you know but uh wabi mia mia i had to run down from where i was i was with a couple of friends that were celebrating their birthdays i had to quickly just run down so that's why I came a bit late. But we're hitting the ground and we're hitting it running immediately. Um, before we start, uh, when I was reading something this morning, um, I stumbled into an excerpt that um, I quickly want to read to everyone uh, to greet all of you. I want to quickly read this. It's quite interesting. Let me just quickly read it. Let me s let's see what um, uh, where was it? I ran into this um, something on Oromia. I want to quickly read what uh, Dr. Aisene Hagosa was saying, uh, so that before we hit the topic running. Uh, yeah, whoa. Where would that have been? That would be page 20. Okay. Maybe that would be page 20. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm quickly going to read this as up before we, we start. This is um, AY. So page 19 to page 20. I want to quickly read something. There's something um, um, Dr. Eisenhagos has spoke about. Um, we had a series of arguments on this topic. Uh, thank God um, that they had to see reasons with some of us. Uh, thank God he spent it very correctly here. Um, this is what um, Dr. Aisene Hagosha wrote. This is about Prince uh, Ikala Deran. I wanted, uh, I wanted to read it so you, we all should pay Wrapped and tension, wrapped and tension. Um, Prince Kaladera, about 900 years ago, was the son of the last Ugisho, king of Benin, said to have been ordered to be executed by his father, the king, in obedience to an oracular directive. His life was spared by the executioners in disobedience of their orders. The distressed prince wandered further into the Igo Ikbako forest in search of safety. He was reputed to have stayed for a considerable period in Uwatong, where he built a palace and had a sizable number of retainers. A time came when the Benin authorities began to threaten his establishment in Uwatong, as narrated in a well-known folklore, complete with the accompanying songs. So the prince deserted the village and doubled back not eastwards. He founded a Roa village in Umude and ended up in the Yoruba country, in the town of Ileife, where he attained the kingly status. There he fathered Prince Oromia, who came to, fa who came to Benin to found the ongoing Oba dynasty. All right, listen to this. Uh, listen to this paragraph. This is what I wanted us to be aware of. This paragraph is very important. Listen very attentively. The Kaladaran story is faithfully replicated in the later story of Prince Ijinua, the son of Oba Olua, who about three centuries after a Kaladaran was also a Benin prince in some distress in the river areas south of Edo land. Ijinua had also ultimately 
become a king in those unfamiliar surroundings. Had Prince Okpame, later Obazolwa, not returned to Benin from Ora land on the entreaties of the Benin chiefs after the death of Obaolua, the city authorities would have sent to Ijinwa, now a king in the country of his sojourn, to return from the rivers and occupy the throne of his father. Olua, this was exactly the same set of circumstances which brought Prince Oromia, a Kaladaran son, to Benin. Do we understand? <laughs> I wanted us to get, do we understand what I just read? What Dr. Aisha Nehagosa was saying that the circumstances of a Kaladaran in Ileife and Prince Jinua in in worry would have been the same would have been the same if not that prince okpame later agreed to become the oba you know in our previous classes i've always talked about that um Ijinua was sent out he, he founded a kingdom of his own then his uncle all right also ran from benin because of emil honou he was he was banished from Benin. So at the time the Ingenua's father died, the, the throne became vacant. So the Benins went to plead with Prince Obama to return back. He did not agree at the first instance, but he later agreed. Should in case Prince Obama had not agreed to, to return back to Benin. Alternatively, the Benin chiefs would have gone to look for Ijinua to return back to Benin to become the Oba. Exactly what they did when they had no king in Benin. They had to go back in search of their prince in Ileife. If that circumstances of going to worry, to go and tell the worried people now to return back our son, Jinua. I'm sure the Shekiri of the present era, certainly the, the way they are going, would have said that there was a time in Benin history, Benin had no king. The Benin people sent to worry for worry people to give us king. Therefore, the worry people, uh, probably if the Jinua could not come, would not send the son. So therefore, the worry people will not be saying that they give us a king. The same instances. The same instances. That's what um, Dr. Aysen Ihagosa was explaining. That it's the same instances. Should Ozola not agreed, the Benins would have gone to Genoa, who has already also established a kingdom of his own, to return back. If that event would have happened, I'm sure that the modern Ishekiri people would have not been saying that there was a time in Benin we had no king, that it was not the Shekiri people that gave us king, just like the way the ignorant Ilefe people are certain. Exactly. So I just wanted us, I just wanted to brief us of what um, my mentor was talking about. But meanwhile, um, I, I, a lot of persons would have been shocked that I wrote Worry Kingdom. I, I spoke extensively about them. I just wanted us to, um, I just wanted us to understand some basic things about uh, the current trend. I wanted to, I want to put my own, my own voice on the matter. I like to be very objective. Okay, if I'm emotional, I don't get too objective, but I'm not emotional now. <laughs> I like to be very objective. Let's be very objective with the matter. The matter has to do with the Ayiri, the logo share, or the ex logo share, or whatever of Wari Kingdom and the Olua Wari. A lot of persons have called and tried to see what's my take on the matter, all right? And I've followed the trend. A lot of people have had several separate trends, uh, uh, opinions about the matter of Olubo Shere, Wari and all of that. But this is it. First, understand this. 
if I'm speaking on matter of kingship, I try to be in the shoe that if the same exact thing had happened in Benin Kingdom, what would be my reaction? Because um, um, but there's, there's a parable in Benin <laughs> that says a guy begi. Someone will have to correct correct me on that. Guy begi na ya bu unye wagbon na ya bu unye wagbon. You understand? You take a sober reflection. Put yourself in the same shoe. All right. It is the fairest of all judgment. It is the fairest. You have to put yourself in the same. Guy begi na ya bu unye na ya bu unye we. All of this things can be difficult, but so I can help you with that. Why I am for uh -huh. but we we'll understand that parable, it's a popular parable in Benin. So I like to put myself in the shoe, all right, to understand. All right, if the event had happened in Benin Kingdom, do the Oba of Benin have right to derobe or suspend or abolish the title of Ologbo share? If 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 it had happened, Ologbo say, not Ologbo share, all right, it's Ologbo say. In Benin, that's the question. A Benin man will say yes. Oba Benin has the right, but when if you not judge that the Ologbosi do not have the right to derobe the Ologbosi in Ologbosi in Wari Kingdom, that means you've been biased. Iya bonye nedo eh? Ya ya we begi na ya bonye na ya bonye nedo. So that's that's what I'm saying. So, uh, so you have to. So, if we feel as Benin people that the Obar Benin has a right to derobe or abolish or whatever, so we should also not believe that the Olua Wari also have the right to derobe, suspend, and all of that. So I've clarified that. So those of our Edo brothers who are saying that the Olu do not have that right, they are not saying the truth. He's the king. I've always said it. If you don't respect the occupant, respect the institution. I've always said it. We that understand Benin beyond the surface level, we understand that loyalty is to the institution, loyalty is to the throne, and not the occupant. When we say Oba Atopwe, we are not saying Oba Atopwe to Oba Iwai, the second only. We are saying Oba Atopwe to every Obas of Benin, every Ogisos of Benin. So that's what it means. So loyalty is to the throne, to the institution, and not to the occupant. As far the Atu Ashe, the third is sitting on that institution, he must be respected. That's what I believe. He must be respected. But however, however, this is this is my opinion on the matter. However, first, I want people to I, I don't like people misquoting me out of context. I want people to understand that Ulu has every right. Ulu. I heard they now refer to him as Oba. Whatever they refer to him, it doesn't matter. He has every right, all right, to suspend the robe, all right, any chief that he wants to. He's a king. If he, if he doesn't have the right, then what makes him a king? He's a king, so he has every right. But however, what is Zodua is saying is that Though he has a right, I want people to understand this. Though he has a right to do that, but it was not the right thing to do. I'm not questioning the authority of the law worry. Though he has a right, but it is not the right thing to do. And I will state my reasons why I feel it's not the right thing to do. First, there is an history behind that title Ulubose. there is an history behind that title when you abolish that title you abolish that history that part that history behind the title and when you abolish that history behind that title you abolish a very vital part of the shakiri history you abolish the very vital part of the Ishekiri history. All right? All right? Now, 
coming back to Benin so that we can basically understand, I like to make references. If it was in Benin, what would the Oba of Benin would have done? This is it. I've studied the Benin history to an extent that I know that this would have been the reaction. The Oba would have sanctioned the title holder, suspend the title holder, derobe the title holder, but not abolish the title. Since all my years of studying Benin history, only one Oba have attempted to abolish a title. I will tell you now, he did not succeed. Coincidentally, it was a title that gave birth to the creation of Ologbose as a title. Only one Alba have attempted to abolish a title in Benin. Only one. There are other instances though, but it was not abolishing of a title. It was uh, the Oba didn't want that family like Obaiweka II. He didn't want the Awo family to return to retain the Ewekas. Sorry, the Ewaka Obaiweka II didn't want Awo family to retain the Obaseki title after Awo died. The Awo family protested. Obaiweka did also succeed. But this is a clear case of abolition of a title that you don't want that title to exist again. It happened in the time of the, the reign of Akenzwa the first. Listen, Oba Akenzwa the first. Because the Yasser of that era was very vindictive, was very high-handed, he protested as exactly the same scenario. Exactly the same scenario. Exactly the same scenario. Lily White, because they are ignorant. Exactly the same scenario. The Yasser of there protested that Oba Akenzwa the first will he will will he will never allow him to become the Oba. Eventually, Oba Eweka the first eventually became the Oba. So the Oba Eweka, sorry, Oba Akenzwa the first, not Oba Eweka, sorry, it's Oba Akenzwa the first, not the second Oba Oba Akenzwa the first reigned in the 18th century. So when he now became the Oba. He was so infuriated by the deceit, by the wickedness, by the all of all the BB grammars you can use of the Yase of Benin. So he wanted to abolish the Yase title, but he did not succeed. The Yase was going. At the time when the Obas were very powerful, listen, this was a time when Oba would tell you jump, you ask the Oba, how high do you want me to drop your majesty? It still wasn't possible because Iyase is not the Iyase is not the small title, Iyase is a big title, and whoever holds it is powerful. And the Iyase then was protested and was going to cause a civil riot in the kingdom. And he apprehended Oba Kendra the first. And Obayakendra the first denied, I'm sorry to say, but this is what the history said, denying that he didn't want it to create, he, he did, he's not abolishing the Yase title, that he wanted to create a title of Ologbori Yase, Ologbori Yase, that the title that he heard that he had created to abolish or to replace the Yase was not to replace the Iyase was a, sub, a sort of a subsidiary of the Iyase title. He now said that Ive e Ologbori Iyase Iyase's um, Iyase's um, what's it called? Iyase's cats. Ologbo cats. Ologbori Iyase. And the first title order of that Ologbori Iyase was one chief of Burma. I want people to understand this. Like I've said, in all my studies of Benin history, only one Obas have attempted to abolish a title because he felt betrayed by whatever cap, whatever that um, one of the other, you know, the, you understand, but eventually, or um, sadly, he did not succeed. 
he did not succeed. Now, there were attempts. There were attempts, even in the far, like Obaiwai the first, when he became the Oba. Top ranking chiefs had insisted that he would not become the Oba of Benin. When he became the Oba, do you know what he did? He did not, he did not abolish the title. Because if he, ha he had tried to abolish the title, the Benin people would have protested. Otherwise, he eliminated the first generation, all the title holders, and replaced them with their first sons. He eliminated the Olia, he eliminated the Doen, he eliminated all of those, about 14 of those chiefs that were into the conspiracies and replaced all of them with their first sons. With their first sons. Exactly the same thing that happened to Prince Dubowa. The four chiefs, the four chiefs, all right, that contested Prince Idubo, Idubowa's um, uh, 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 qualification or whatever to the throne. The moment he became the Oba, he eliminated them. He did not abolish. He did not abolish the title. Because when you abolish the title, you are abolishing a very important aspect of your history. So you don't abolish the title. You sanction, you suspend, or, or you derope the title holder. All right, that's what you do. That's what every Obas of Benin would have done. You don't abolish your logo share title, but you abolish Chief Ayiri. Otherwise, because of Chief Ayiri, why would you not deny the, the future of the Shekiri people, of the history of what the Ologbo series, previous Ologbo series, who probably would have also sacrificed for the land, the field of that history? If Akenzoa I would have succeeded, you and I probably would not have been talking about Iyase. Nobody would have quite, nobody would have been aware of probably if there was ever a title called Iyase or the title of Iyase could have just been one of the titles that, oh, there was a title in Benin that was abolished. The history that has came up with all of the Iyase, the Iyase, the Ekmenedi and the, the likes, those great Iyase, you and I would not have been. The Iyase, um, uh, uh, Okizi, the Iyase, the likes of Iyase, Humphrey Omos, like, you know, all of us would have been talking about the history or the remarkable history these lines of Iyase would have created because one Iyase had messed up, and because of he had messed up, you want you 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 abolish that title. I'm not saying. I, I would I would give you Sehures. Isehure cannot even the Obarabini. I've said it before. Cannot even if he wants to. He can abolish the Sehure title. He only suspended Amo Aburo, the, the title holder. Isehure title is hereditary. No Oba. Can, can abolish any hereditary title. The what you can do is to derope him. Like they have said, is it derope? I don't know. Is to suspend the title holder. But that is a hure title. If the Nosahai, the Nosahai, the present holder of the Sehure dies, his first automatically becomes a necessary hure. That's how it is. It's hereditary. Yes, exactly, Stephen Wise. Even as Esama do reach, I wanted to also talk about the Esama. It was suspended. Even Esama had to contest it. That Ege Nera Mama E Oweye Mie E. Otherwise, the Benin makes it quite impossible that if I'm the present Obara Benin, I gave you a title. On no account should my own son, the next Obara Benin, strip you away from the title. Otherwise, it becomes irrelevant. If tomorrow, um, the president of Luatowashi the third, may he live long on the throne. If tomorrow he passes on, his first son, I don't know, becomes the next Olu, and he now decides to say, I thereby recall the Olu share, it becomes like conflict of kingship. That is why any title that precedes a particular king ought not to ordinarily be touched. You can suspend the title holder. But because of his sins, you cannot deny the future of your kingdom, of the history that that title means. So that's my own argument. Like I said, 
He has the right to do anything he wants to do, but it was not the right thing to do. That's what he is said. I don't want to make anybody go misquote me tomorrow. He has the right to do whatever he wants to do. He's a king, but it was not the right thing to do. If it was in Benin, like I said, if what the Oba would have done is to strip off the title holder, Ayiri, but it, but he would leave the Lobosher title. He would leave the Lobosher title. All right? Because another great Ishaku person who would probably be humble, who would probably serve the kingdom very well with, with his mind, might also come from that lineage. Might also come from that lineage. Why? Because of one, I don't know, whatever atrocity or whatever abomination or sins of one person commit has stripped the future of every bona fide uh, member from that family, the fuel or the right to also, um, to also collect that title to, to right the wrong or probably the previous order or two previous orders. All right? So that is my take on this matter. <laughs> I hope I've been able to convince you and not confuse you. <laughs> I understand. I just feel that they can amend their differences and if the Olu wants to react because um Ayuri is unrepentant the Olu should deal with Ayuri and leave the logo share title the logo share title is an integral part of the Shekiri history or more currently Iwe history I'm a product of history and I would defend history and I'm trying to defend history. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's my argument. So people shouldn't, people, I don't want people to get it right that I, I said that Olu or Wari doesn't have it right. No, 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 no. I, I come from, I come from, I come from, I come from a tribe where we respect our king so well. So I respect other kings, probably the one from Ileife. All right. Uh, why would I, why would I pick you? I can't pick your call when I'm on a live video, Uncle. I did live video. How would I pick your call? Anyway, Mocky Face. Uh, some persons were trying to get it all confused. Um, Mocky Face has been has been trying to reach me for quite some while. That um, he has a question for me and all of that, and all of that. People said. Why, why haven't I blocked him? I blocked him, but you still have other numbers I use in calling me. Why even nobody in Daya calling me now? Because he said he wanted to ask a question. I asked him that he knows when I do my live program. He should ask his question. It, you don't need to call me here so that we can, we can trash all of your questions out. Like I said, don't scare them away. Draw them close. I can't pick your cup, monkey fish. I don't understand. The hand will pick. I don't understand. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I know some people will say that they marry monkey face or buy do hard way. You know, I've been in people talks. I don't have any business with him. It distorts my life. He calls me. Um, he calls me. It disturbs my life and all of that. It distorts my life. He calls me. Even he calls me by eleven p.m. I, I wouldn't even know who is calling until I start to hear what he's saying. All right. Okay. Thank you. It's very easy. Uh, he started using a line in my hand. If anybody calls me now, once, once I hear his voice, I was like, we swing. That's sort of a thing. So, and um, that's all. I can pick any call. I don't have his number. Anyway. I don't have his number. He calls me with different lines just for, for me to pick and all of that. So anyway, uh, um, so, um, 
let's not get distracted. Let's not get distracted. Okay, so I've been able to trash that one of the worry out. Okay, I've been able to trash that one of worry out. Then let's now go to the second topic. See, please, for um, uh, I know he records people. Don't you get? I know him very well now. Whenever he calls me, I know he's on a live program. I just tell him that we're real live program and that sort of a thing. Umayni Hanaipa. What I'm saying is that he calls me with a different line until I speak with him for probably 30 seconds or so. I capture his voice. Then I'll know the kind of a, the person. Uh, anyway. See, people, people shouldn't get distracted by him. Let's, let's move on to another topic. Why? I don't want anybody to get distracted by him, which is whatever. So, uh, the, next, the next line is... Okay, like I wanted to say, established was, um, um, like I wanted to establish is, um, if anybody is able to convey the, the message to the Olua worry, uh, uh, if you, if you able to convey this message to the Olua worry, please help me, um, Convene this message to the Allah worry. Uh, um, that that this is what I have just said. You should deal with the title holder and not abolish the title. A lot of children in the future want to read about the origin of the Ulubusir and how Ulubusir came from Benin. Obviously, Olobosel was not part of the 70 chiefs that left from Benin. All right. It was not part because at the time of um, Obaolua, all right, at the time of Obaolua, um, at the time of Obaolua, uh, Olobosel title has not been created. Obaolua was in the 15th century. Then the title was created in 18th century. Almost, we are looking at almost... Um, almost um, 250 to 300 years apart. So that means all of those other titles was already existing in Wari before Lobosel was created in Benin, before probably they also left, uh, one of the sons of the Lobosel also left to become the Lobosel in Wari, and almost 250 to 300 years um, apart, all right? Uh, okay. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, sometimes I just I would just hope you people are distracting me by responding to him. So um, let's talk about Queen Eden. Uh, I've explained it. All he has says pets, like he has says pets. Olugbo pets. He has says cats. You understand? Uh, I've, I think I've explained that already. I've explained that already. Maybe you have to tend to just to worry. There are a lot of them. Olia, Eru, Osodin, Ezomon, they call it Ujomo. Um, Eru is there. Olia is there. Um, Ezomo, Osodin is there. Umangwe. Umangwe is there. They are quite... They are quite a lot. They are quite a lot. They are seventies. So <laughs> even them cannot even remember all the seventies because I was reading, I was reading one of the works of um, um, uh, uh, um, I, I I was reading one of the works of one of the Shakiri historians. So they couldn't they, even them can't even recall the seventy chiefs. I think they can be able to recall, I think about 20, 26, and they said about, of all of the 26, I heard it's only one that is hereditary. That one is Oshodi. I think the only hereditary amongst all of them is Oshodi title. Abi? Someone should correct me. I'm not too sure. I think it's Oshodi. That is you. They spell it as, in their own, they spell it like, sorry, I'm calling it Oshodi. Rightly, it is called Oshoidin. 
are they related to the chiefs in Benin Bible? Yes, they were their first sons. I don't understand. It's just like I am the I'm the chief hero in Benin Kingdom. You get when Jinoa was living, he took my first son, who's supposed to be the next chief hero if I die. They were the sons. Okay, I wouldn't have been very correct that they were only the first one. They were the sons of the 70 chiefs in Benin. They were their biological children. The different Ihaimenowa did not follow. Get it? Mathematically, if you do the mathematics, if Jinowa had left Benin probably in 1482, and the title of Ologbosel was created by Obakenzwa the first. I think Obakenzwa the first reigned after Ewak by Ozuari. By the way, Akenzwa the first should have reigned around 1720 or so. Maybe around that kind of 1720. So when you when you minus 1720, 1720 minus 14, let's say 1480. So I should do the mathematics. Um, 1720 minus 14. 80. So one should do the mathematics. 17120 one, minus 1480. So one should press calculator and do the mathematics. Let's see the, the difference. Alright? 1720 1720 minus 1480. Alright? 1720 minus 1480. That is 1,720 minus 1,480. Um, so, um, someone should do the mathematics for me, please. So that we'll know the, almost the age difference between the first 70 chiefs. All right? And when Ologose was created in Benin, not when it left. One couldn't tell when it left to Wario, but one can tell when it was created in Benin. That's 240 years. So what um, that 240 years that we're talking about, maybe 40 years later, all right? Maybe 40 years later, that was when it was created. That was when it was created in Wari. So we are talking about almost about 280 years difference between the first 70 titles that was established in Wari and the Ologosere title, all right? I, I, don't, I do not know the history how come he, he he probably went last but not became first all right i do not know that history of how he probably went last obviously he went last and and not became first i don't know that history all right i've given you the control now life of um, evis david i've given you the control you are not mean hmm? evis david you are an admin, so you have the you are an admin of this group. Hmm? So you have the power to block on my behalf. <laughs> no, you have the power to block. But let me just block him. So that he doesn't distract us. Because I see you all are very distracted. Okay? Exactly. But you have the power. Okay, so can we continue now, ladies and gentlemen? Uh -huh. So if Olu Erejuwa, he also had issue with Isia, said, did Olu Erejuwa, is it the first or the second? Did he ban Isia, Isia, he didn't, he didn't abolish Isia, it's the wrong, I've always said it, people should understand, it's the wrong thing, you can't abolish a title because of a holder. Just like um, Iyase was created to checkmate the powers of the Aegean, the Aulia, the Edoin, the Ezomo, and the Eru. Okay, okay. Obviously, they learned everything that they know from Benin. Everything, all of the application was from Benin, they know how to cheat. So that's why they requested from Ologbo said to, oh, you, you, okay, are we, are we seeing the history now? 
Are we seeing the history now? <laughs> I begin to see a lot of connection. Because you know that Olubo said title was created from Iyase. I said it just now. Iyase's pet. Olubo Iyase. Iyase's pet. So, if the Iyase in Wari Kingdom was not misbehaving, the Wari people knew, or the Olus of them knew, that, okay, since, na Olubo said they been wanted to checkmate the power of Iyase for Benin, now he can invite Traditionally, it was a traditional process that was started in Benin that was not completed. So they now invited the Ologose or Benin to checkmate the power of the Iyase in Wari because that was actually the original function what Ologose was created, to checkmate, to replace, to abolish, to, to, to replace the title of the Iyase. This is a... Ayoga Yumodia. <laughs> I hope you understand that. I hope you understand that parable. A yoga you more the abuinai de. And yah him. When they are completely devoid of, when they are completely, when they lack in the knowledge or the wisdom to pull through, they simply come back to Benin to understand how to go through, which is normal. Because this is the best place of their throne. So they have to come and learn the intricacies and the technicalities of how to go about it. Which is normal. Which is normal. Okay? Which is normal. And that's exactly what they have done. They have succeeded. But the question now is, this is what I'm posing to Lua Tawashi, the thought. That if he had asked his chiefs, on references of how to go about the abominable act, presumably, that Ayiri have committed. And if they had referenced Benin, the chiefs would have been not better informed to tell him that, no, in Benin, they don't abolish titles. You don't. You deal with the title holder. In the old, our Ginyayimi. Our Ginyayimi in the old. But now you don't. All you just do is to say that it's no longer the Sekure, like in the case of the Sekure. He has, it's no longer, you cannot say it's no longer the Sekure. You will suspend him for parading himself as a Sekure, of having a tradition and create a title, if you so which, that replaces the function of the Sekure. But the Sekure title remains because it's, a, it's an extant part of the history of the land. You don't tamper with your history. You don't, you don't obliterate, you don't exorcise a part of your history because of anger. Because of anger, you don't. So that's why I'm telling, if, 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 if my plea could go to the nobles, the chiefs of the world, to tell him that, his royal majesty, Olobose as a title is not what has wronged you. It is the Ayiri that has wronged you. Deal with the Ayiri, but let the Olobose title remain. So that's why I said the Olu has a right to derobe the Olobose, but it was not the right thing to do. By abolishing the title, that's what I'm against. Not dealing with with the title holder. You can't deal with the title holder. You're the king. Eh. Uh, might not to stress for the matter. I might drink water. Water is life. <sighs> anyway. We've done that. Let's go to topic number two. Topic number two. I want us to pay a very rapt attention. Very rapt. Because I've always asked myself, I've always been thinking about it. In 2017, that thought came that what if essay ni ba 
or ye do ye win or ye na. I want you people to listen because some of us are not trying to look deep into the past and see whether we can find remedy to the present tribulations bedeviling us as a people. And one of the remedy is what I want to share with you people today. <laughs> I'm not a spiritualist though. <laughs> but I feel that the ancestors still reveal secrets of the past to their dedicated followers like me. I believe in the ways of the old. I believe in the ways of my ancestors. The secret is this. In 2017, I woke up one morning uneasy. And I was like, what is going on? Then the thought of Eden crossed my mind. In 2017, then I said February 14 should be declared as Queen Eden's Day. A lot of people have been celebrating it for the past four years. Happy Eden's Day. A lot of people have been celebrating Happy Eden's Day. But let me tell you a secret. Queen Eden is not happy. I was with an old man yesterday who also had written a letter in 2016 to Hama, who probably is the um, chairman of the Committee of Arts and Culture, that a day should be set aside to celebrate Queen Eden. I didn't know when I had a mind. So he stumbled into some of our publications, some of our videos, GBD videos, and he saw that we were already doing something that he also had a revelation of a year before I had the same revelation of. I want us to understand. Uh, okay, did he ask this overdo? Uh -huh. uh, okay, he asked this overdo because. Uh, uh, so, Listen. Till now. Eden is the greatest Edo woman ever. She's greater than a mortar. She's greater than Idia. She's greater than every other heroine by far. And I've always said it. I give me a there is no there is no body who will allow her his or herself to be sacrificed for a people that for a nation or a kingdom that she will have no stake in the future. But yet, that is the greatest of all sacrifices a human being can make. Queen India fought war. Am I not there? India fought. I say this all the time because she had a stake in the future of the kingdom, the child. Oweye was Oba. So she had to fight, not for her or not for even us, but so that the son can remain being the Oba. Do you understand? But Eden sacrificed her life. No stake in the future of the kingdom. That she has sacrificed for. You cannot. They are not. 
And today, in the chronology of idea is everywhere. I have with Zotan. I have your own name, Motan. But how is Zotan? The Motan, the Motan only, only just supported. Or by why? With or without a Motan, there would have been a by why. And the kingdom, without Eden, they will not have become Benin kingdom. That's what people don't understand. They the king line would have been abrupted. Don't forget. He didn't have no child for him. Then that woman is not being talked about today. Then other ones that did lesser than what she did have been talked about. What's in Eden? Why hasn't she been deified? If she's not being deified, then less it is now you and I that must change the narrative of Eden and let the world know what Eden is to. Let the world know. All right? We are school team here, Dema. It's everywhere. We are all schooled. We are not dollars. Timmy here, Dema. Timmy, we are not dollars. It was abolished, that title. What was read was that it will not be as a nickname. What does that mean? So that means it's not, the title is no longer there. It will not be as a nickname, so it was abolished. We read all of it, what, everything. I watched the video, so. You understand? So, this is my proposal. I want to, I'm springing into action. We've been doing it on a low scale. But next year, Queen Indian's Day, is going to be explosive. I put all my resources into it. Because we have to do it for her. And when we do it for her, Edouard de Bédin. Ego Daima. And going by, by the antecedent of the story, she seems to be a very jealous woman. She seems very jealous. Yes, going by accident because he not tie your turn over no living thing must be allowed to step on a graveyard or a gravesite. Any living thing that steps on a graveyard must be sacrificed. Must be sacrificed. That's a jealous she is. So definitely she would have been rolling on a graveyard that other heroines that did lesser than what she did. I mean, but yesterday, even some of, I was with one of our relatives yesterday. And she asserted that Okani Okere, because there are nine Okas. Nine. Oka. Nine. Oro. But no Kere, Okani Okere. So next week, Wednesday, and Wednesday, and next week, Wednesday, my group, my GBD, we are going to Oka Neo. To go and meet the Oka people and we want to tell them what our minds are about the preparation for the celebration of her next year. We want to make it global, we want to make it international. And um, this morning, a lot of ideas were just pouring into my head. 
a lot of ideas were pouring into my head. And in conclusively what the idea was is that she represents sacrifices and she represents love. That dedicates that February 14th to only Nedu, not Bay. There was there's a festival in Miami, a festival in Agmoyagi Levi. Why not? Exactly. Why can't you? And you know, it did. Yes, we can name our children. These are some of the things we're talking about. That's how we remember her. It then. You understand? So, what my mind is, we said it up a committee in the next two weeks. In that committee, I go a festival. I live, I could be, I, that dog again live, I, there's a festival that is called. I am mobile wherever do a lot of these things want to use this Eden day to revise some of these things. Agmoya Agmoya do a dad or gig levi. Alright? Then I yard ye vai could be this envy and all of that. We'll have to find a way of awareme be, which is the cardinal idea of Eden has to be reinvigorated using her as a case study like it ought to be. So that day should be all about cooking massively. Cooking massively. Every house is in Benin. Cooking massively. To be given to the neighbors, the poor people around us and we have to do it in a way that the world must know why we are doing it. We're showing ourselves love. We're showing our neighbors love. We're showing everybody around love. We're showing ourselves love. We're showing everybody around love because she has she has showed us what love is all about. What I'm envisaging, we're going to have to carry China's life. That costs a lot of millions. But it's doable. It's doable. So, we started in preparation almost immediately. In the next two weeks, we're going to roll out committees. First, I have, I have, I have, um, I have the way I do things. I don't go to politicians. I don't meet the big guys. I don't meet the elites. Mm -mm. We want to do it. We want to pass a message. This is our land. This is our history. This is the woman that we're talking about. Who, who she's so dear to us. And a lot of people said, why did you choose February 14th as though the world? Eden wasn't born that day. Nobody knows when Eden was born. Nobody knows when it. We know the year, but we don't know the day. So we don't know the day, we don't know the month. Why did I choose February 14th, 2017? A lot of people are trying to question that, my rationale for that. First of all, if the world celebrates Valentine's, February 14th, how is that the business of we the do people? It's not our business. It doesn't consign us. It does what it celebrates. Who we recognize in Queen Eden? I would choose February 14th to celebrate her. It has nothing to do with Valentine. It has nothing. Valentine do not hold February 14th. All right, why did I choose that date? So that we can use that date to celebrate our woman who celebrated, who sacrificed her life, her time, for us and obliterates the Western ideology of Valentine from our calendar as an Edo people, let every of our neighbors or every other world, when we start it, I'm sure that the Gala people will say, Princess Inikbi also did the same. Let's, let's celebrate Princess Inikbi. That same February 14th in replacement of Valentine. Then the Yoruba said, okay, Moremi did the same thing. Let's celebrate Moremi 
a replacement of the misconceived European or Western ideology of Valentine's. Who we do not even know? We are celebrating Happy Valentine. And I'm welcome. It's even sexual. It's even sexually orchestrated or demonized or whatever you call it. What we want to celebrate, what that day is to us as a do people, as Benin people, is that a purest, selfless woman sacrificed her life for a generation. She has no, she had, or she has no stake. Sorry, calls are coming through. For a generation, she has no stake in. For a generation, she has no stake in. Please. I know we don't used to take things seriously. We don't, we don't used to take things seriously. But please, I'm pleading. No one is doing it for Izodua. This is not about Izodua. This is not about my association or my group. This is about the entire Edo land. It is prophesied that until we do it, this whole unity and all of those love that we're talking about, we might not be able to attain it because we've wronged my way, my way, no we me no you ni ma ma mia mia ma bizu be ma magi mo e ki no suppose no suppose no ye o huni ro e ko o huni no ya vie da e jon e dini kau a boy, a book man, ya he no redo, no viema. A veni, or do I see me ni boom, would tell do a gwale me away, or be nagy yeri. That's all. Or be nagy yeri. That's all. That's what I was told yesterday. Or be nagy yeri. That's all. She's not asking for anything. Remember me. Remember what I did for this land. Remember my sacrifices. While others left, those who had stick, who had children, who had sons that will eventually become a Nigis, that will eventually become the Oba, I had nothing. I, I could have run too. To my place of birth, Okaniu. But I didn't. I wanted the line of kingship to continue. Even when she sacrificed, what did Ewakbe did? Ewakbe didn't do anything. The only law that Ewakbe, the only agreement Ewakbe had was how to ensure that the lines of the kings continue. Ewakbe did not even put a law. Of remembering her. Even her own husband. That she sacrificed a lot for. Could not even put a law to remember her. Don't forget. Edo was a slave. That saved Ewai Prince Ogun. When he became a by Ewai. The first pronouncement is made. Is that from today henceforth. My capital city will be called Edo. That was an instant remembering. And he went to assume. His dead body from Ogiefa's compound. I buried him. At our gender, if you don't know, the, the, the small house, no one, no one will out their gates. <coughs> no one, no, that small house, now I said, I guess a gate or a is where a door is buried till date. He wasn't buried there, he was buried at a gay house. He went to assumed his dead body and buried it at the front of the palace. A valiant, our a dion or a do. Which propitiated by a short man. He remembered that slave. A slave was remembered instantly by his benefactor. But Ewakbe could not remember the queen who sacrificed her life by also declaring a day in Ayayere 
or they find her. It has always been like that till date. Nobody has remembered her. We have to change it. We have to remember her. Anyway. Anyway, see any other time. Can take it with levity like we always do. Or can take it serious. Like I think we should. But wanting to be assured, I will not be part of a generation who shows ingratitude to those who are sacrificed so much for their land. So I do the little I can, but I feel this is not about his other way anymore. This should be done to be as large as possible. Let's have a unity of purpose of a something. And don't forget and all of that. I ain't dating because All of these things are connected to a rain. To a kind of a, a to a kind of a cycle of an issue. And I'm not a spiritual person, but those who are spiritual should understand where I'm speaking from. That these things is deeper than even my own expression. It is something we need to do for her. It's something we need to do for her. All right? What I mean is what I have in mind, what I had in mind this morning, I was like, after the committee is set up, we open a warehouse, a dance warehouse. <laughs> what I mean, there's a warehouse. A building could be celebrated, could be... <clears throat> Could be opened where everybody will go and be putting bags of rice. If we have a hundred bags of rice or two hundred bags of rice, so that we can cook two hundred bags of rice with cows and have a trailer load of food to distribute around the entire Benin city on that day with songs, with hundreds and thousands of people. Of Benin extract, starting from our own hometown, Oka, Kanio, celebrating around Benin, then Una Station. I'm, I'm having a lot of thoughts, though. That station at our graveside. Even pleading for our forgiveness, for having failed for. Over 300 years, not to have remembered our heroism. Then I ask for our blessings. These are just thoughts that are coming to my head. Mm. We'll create all that in the next... In my way, on the 20th of October, which also coincidentally tallies with the birthday and the 50th anniversary of Omonoba Nedo, Kwa Kolo Kolo, by why the second of Gidiga, October 20th. It was also tally, that's the day we're going to Okadio. All right, we should also remember that that's the birthday of our monarch and also his coronation day, his 50th year. Coronation anniversary. We should also bear that in mind. That's on the 20th. That's on Wednesday. So these are about. So a lot of people will be part of it. Maybe by next week. On my live program on Friday. On Sunday. They will now bring a lot of people into the WhatsApp. We're going to create a WhatsApp group for that. 
for Scrutiny Queenie Dance Day. And we are rolling into, we are starting preparation earnestly and brutally because what I'm having in mind is channels should cover that program live. In respect of what the cost will be, we can, we can collectively roll it. This is about our history. This is about our culture. It should be covered live for the world to see. Mm. We'll do it for you then. Mm. Anyway. Yes. And we're going to do it. This is the first time I feel that we're going to do something. Nobody, the stakeholders, the politicians will not have a penny in addition to it. Not have a penny. And we'll see that the Benins will be united in cause. And I pray that <clears throat> the loving spirit, uh, amen, rest in peace, Captain Osa, amen. It could be ITV, it could be whatever, but we have to want to have a national TV or a global TV that uh, can spread the news bigger. Anyway, um, I want to thank all of you who are here, who have been able to listen to my program. Yes, queen. She's a queen. Or oh, she was a queen. Or oh, she's a queen. She's still a queen. It's queen. Oh, her banner. Oh, Louis. Oh, Louis, then. Queenie, then. Oh, Louis, then. All right? So it will be called Oloi Dance Day, not even Queen. Should not be trying to be too westernized. Oloi Dance Day, which should be appropriate, not Queen. All right? So, but please, I want us to take it very serious because it will be very serious. All right? Let people to start speaking the truth. February 14th, Benin is going to be shut down for Queen Eden. All the b-bots, every place Benin is going to be shut down for her. We're going to ensure that it happens. And it happens during our time. It started, not it happened during our time. It started during our time. It's a legacy that we want to pass through. And I can assure you, after we do it February 14, let's check what will happen between February 14, 2022 and February 14, 2023. Let's check what is going to happen in Benin Kingdom between that one year. Let's check if things will not change. Anyway, it's in your turn. Why I was it? Um, I'll see you guys next week Sunday, seven thirty p.m. So from next week Sunday, seven thirty p.m., we'll now open a WhatsApp group. I'll talk to my secretary, then we can pick it up from there. So I like to see all of us who are really very patriotic about our land, get involved in this. So, it can, 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 it so all of these, we should always keep on understanding that we represent the priest, the priestly and the royal lines of great men and women. So we should walk in the tandem of the great names of the past to direct our footsteps to ensure criminalities, crimes. We should walk in the path of righteousness. We should walk in the path of truth. We should walk in the path of honesty. That is a path of a true Edoma. I've always been saying it. That is a path of a true Edoma. An Edoma is truthful. An Edoma is very honest. An Edoma keeps to his integrity. We must always allow these three principles of truth, integrity, and honesty guide us. It was a principle that guided 
the beginnings of old that made them did all the exploits that they did. It is a principle that we must employ as a people. I will brother not tell my tag me or my say a yay or you know. You need only tax it. Why are we so bad talk by you? It's so I'll see you guys on Sunday, seven thirty next week. Why are we so?